The mysterious floating island in Life of Pi. What does it mean? Was it real? Was it actually carnivorous? And what was with all the meerkats? I'm Kevin Harris. Today we are going to dive deeper into the various levels of meaning, not only at the center of the island, but perhaps, quite possibly, the center of the universe, including beautifully symbolic references to ancient Hindu texts that may help to illuminate the secret meaning of the life of Pi. I have to stop right here and tell you that I was very surprised by the positive response to my first Life of Pi video and all the requests to go deeper into the meaning of the island. Honestly, when I posted that video, I was scared I was going to get it all wrong and offend large groups of people by mispronouncing things, etc. So the fact that it was well received is still quite humbling to me. Now with this video, I once again did more research and once again, I'm a little concerned so let me know nicely at the end of the comments how I did. All right, we're going to jump about three-fourths of the way into the movie, and at this point in the movie, Pai Patel is floating on a lifeboat in the middle of the ocean along with a man-eating Bengal tiger named Richard Parker. Both Pai and Richard Parker are fairly lifeless and close to death when they come across the floating island with its life-saving food and fresh water. It is the last thing they experience before arriving on the shores of Mexico and going their separate ways. First of all, if you read the book, there is some doubt cast on whether the island really existed at all or whether it was a hallucination. In the near distance, I saw trees. I did not react. I was certain it was an illusion that a few blinks would make disappear. I continued to disbelieve my eyes, but it was a thrill to be deluded in such a high quality way. And if it was just a dream, that would explain away some of the weirdness of the situation and that alone might satisfy some people. Second, it was a point of decision, a temptation to not continue the journey, but to stay in this spiritual plateau, this Garden of Eden-like paradise forever. An all-you-can-eat buffet for Pi and an all-you-can-eat buffet for Richard Parker. We don't see it as much in the movie where the tiger feasts on the meerkats. I filled my stores with fresh water, ate seaweed until my stomach could take no more, and brought as many meerkats as I could fit into the storage locker for Richard Parker. So if you look at the island as a hallucination, it's almost like Pi is deciding on whether he should go on living or not. Should he allow himself to die happy in this delusion, living on this island in his mind while actually dying at sea? And is Pi Patel in his own mind even worthy of living? God, thank you for giving me my life. I'm ready now. The theme of the movie, as I explained more in my first video, has been related to the mouth and killing and eating meat and even cannibalism. We learn at the end of the life of Pi that one interpretation of his story was that all the animals that were on his boat were actually people that he portrayed as animals to lessen the brutality of what they did to each other. Oh, my sons and I are vegetarians. Do you have anything? No, 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 no. Not one gravy. You don't want gravy? No. Un plat vegetarian. The ship's cook, portrayed as a hyena, killed and ate the injured sailor. Hello. Pai's mother, depicted as an orangutan, protested, and the cook killed her as well, throwing her to the sharks. The book makes it clear that Pai then kills the cook and ends up eating him. This is why Pai projected Richard Parker on the boat. The tiger represented Pai, or at least cannibalistic animal within himself that he was trying to come to terms with. Who was this murderer, this cannibal, and was he worthy of living? Did he want to reach the land and be rescued, or did he deserve only death? While on the island, he makes this choice. To better understand, it helps to look at an ancient Hindu story that somewhat echoes Pai's story. According to Hindu legend, a wise old sage named Markandeya was granted immortality and the ability to see the end of the world and the destruction of all of its creatures. He floated for some time alone in the cosmic ocean until, in one version of the story, he came across a small island from which grew a banyan tree. Lying upon a leaf of that tree was an infant sucking his toe. But not just any infant, the Hindu god Krishna in the form of an infant. We learned about at the beginning of the movie. And 
And the wise old man looks into the mouth of Krishna and you guessed it, he sees the entire universe. But he sees it both in its current state of destruction and in the future in its restored form as it will be again. He realizes that this apparent annihilation, what he thought was the end of everything, is really also the beginning of new life. Pai Patel, who most likely would have been familiar with this story, sees the echoes in his current situation. The gods were my superheroes growing up. Hanuman, the monkey god, lifting an entire mountain to save his friend Lakshman. Ganesh, the elephant-headed, risking his life to defend the honor of his mother, Parvati. Vishnu, the supreme soul, the source of all things. Vishnu sleeps floating on the shoreless cosmic ocean, and we are the stuff of his dreaming. His world as he knows it has been destroyed, his family dead, and he is floating alone in the cosmic ocean, mourning all that he has lost. But his own death is not yet certain. He can choose to keep living and perhaps arrive at a new world where a new life awaits him. He is like Noah in the ark, surrounded by death, but carrying within his vessel the seeds of the future. Is this the end or the beginning? Or is it merely the present where the past and the future meet? This seemingly idyllic island holds a dark secret. At the center of the island, much like the Garden of Eden, is a tree with forbidden fruit, or at least what looks like fruit, but is really made up of leaves, and within those leaves are teeth the remains of a previous traveler. These teeth are not only references once again to the mouth, but also reveal Pai's fate if he stays too long at this place. The acidic nature of the island, if he chooses to stay, will eventually mean his death. The island, like him, is cannibalistic. And seeing these teeth shocks him and wakes him up to the direction he is currently heading. The island itself, much like Pai, is floating in the cosmic ocean and represents both life and death, the ending of his old world and the beginnings of a new. From a distance, the island looks like a person floating in the water. I dare say you are wondering why I am floating around London like this. Could this be the wise old man, Mark and Dea, witnessing the destruction of the world? Could it be the blue-skinned god Krishna, carrying within himself the whole entire universe? Or could it represent Pai himself, the only witness of the horrific sinking of the ship to Simpson, and the only passenger who will arrive at the new world? The answer to all three questions is yes, for they all tell the same story of death and rebirth, forgiveness and reincarnation. Awakened to his state, Pai chooses to accept his past and let go of the fantasy that helped him in his grieving. Pai is so emotional when Richard Parker leaves because it represents becoming one with himself again forgiving himself and letting the easier story, the fantasy, go. He has come to accept even the Richard Parker side of himself, the side that, in order to survive, had to kill and indulge, even in cannibalism. But he is not a monster. He does not need to be afraid of himself. Yes, the truth. Nor do others need to fear him. Like a soldier returning from war, he has experienced horrible things and is forever changed. I was alone in a lifeboat, drifting across the Pacific Ocean, and I survived. But he is now ready to move on, to live again. So the island was a decision point. It was a meeting with God moment. A garden of Eden where he had to make a choice to partake of the fruit or not. The bitter cup of past sins that still haunted him. It may have all been a hallucination or a dream, but either way, it was a turning point. It was the choice to let go of Richard Parker and forgive himself. The final step in his journey. The choice to start over. The choice to live. And that is the moral of the story. What story shall we tell next? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for supporting this channel. See you next time.